Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And can you believe that it is already August? Like, I'm seriously wondering where the summer went. Also, shout out to Johnny Ive Parody on Twitter who made this amazing shirt, which is Minim Aluminiumalism. And uh, viewer Edward was the one who told me that I needed to buy it and wear it on the show. I, I love it. Also, for real, I do want to take a time, to, uh, a chance rather, to give a shout out to the real Johnny Ive for 27 years of helping shape the state of modern industrial design. Okay, enough of all that. Let's get into this week's latest dev news. So first up, I'm just going to share this because this happened this morning as I was preparing for the show and writing the script. And uh, yeah, famed professional gamer and esports legend Ninja has just announced that he will be streaming on Mixer exclusively from now on. And I'm going to be honest, I really have nothing to add to this except wow. And uh, also, I am still really, really bad at Fortnite. Next up, in some WSL2 news, the Windows Insider build that came out at the end of last week has added some great new features. So beginning in Insider's preview build 18945, you can now um, use localhost to connect to your Linux applications from Windows. And this is great because in the first few released builds, you had to access networking applications via a remote IP address, which could kind of be a pain. And so the team says that in the future, they want to make sure that you can access your Windows networking applications from Linux using localhost as well, but they prioritize Linux apps from Windows as that's the most common networking use case for things like uh, a web developer who wants to access their website in a browser. Also, you can stay tuned for more improvements in this area. WSL2 also got some global configuration options as well as the ability to run a custom kernel. And a link to Craig Lowen's blog post with all the details is linked down below. In some other WSL2 related developments, the Docker team posted the availability of its technical preview of Docker Desktop for WSL2. And this is both a technical preview and a technical preview that only works with insider builds. So it is very important to note that this is not for production. Let me repeat that. This is not for production, but that doesn't mean it isn't awesome anyway. And as we've discussed in other episodes, the changes that are happening at the core of how WSL2 works means that Docker for Windows will now not only work on um, uh, you know, Windows Pro and Windows Enterprise machines, but also Windows Home machines, which it couldn't do before. And uh, you can also uh, use a Docker for Windows with your WSL distros without having to fiddle with various workarounds like you did before. And so I've got a link um, to both the Docker blog post announcing the preview and showing off some of the new things to try, as well as a really great blog post from everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman, that offers more perspective on what you can do with Docker and WSL2. And uh, one of my favorite resources, and I, I mean this genuinely, is docs.microsoft.com. And as I've often said, I know that in the not too distant past, Microsoft's documentation wasn't always the best or even the easiest to navigate. But over the last few years, that has changed in a huge way. And this week, it gets even better because the docs team announced a new feature at docs.microsoft.com slash samples. And that is now a unified company-wide code samples browser. And so with this uh, release, the team is aiming at making it even easier for you to discover relevant code samples to get started no matter what Microsoft product or service you're using. And also, a great uh, note for Azure users, lots of the code samples have a one-click deploy to Azure button that is associated with a relevant ARM template. And there are lots of other great features too, and so I've linked to the Docs blog post announcing the new features and the sample browser itself in the description below. Also, the team really wants your feedback, so if you have suggestions for improvements or if you run into issues, please file an issue in the feedback area on GitHub. In some release news, Electron 6.0.0 was released this week. And as we discussed a couple of months ago, the Electron team has taken to a more consistent release cycle timed around the Chromium release cadence. And so I've got a link to the Electron blog announcement and the full release notes in the description down below. But I do want to note that this release marks the end of support for Electron versions 3.x. So if you've got an app that's running on one of the older versions, it's time to upgrade. 
In some .NET news, Xamarin co-founder, Mono creator, Gnome creator, and all-around rad dude Miguel de Queza tweeted about a new project that a lot of teams at Microsoft have had a hand in, and it is uh, called Touch Sharp. Excuse me, Torch Sharp, and it's a .NET library that provides access to the library that powers PyTorch. And so it's um, a work in progress, but it already provides a .NET API that can be used to perform various operations on A10 tensors. It can do things like score of Torch script models and uh, training of simple neural networks. And so uh, the current focus is to basically bind the entire API surfaced by libtorch. And so I've got a link to the NuGet download page and the GitHub in the description below. And this is great stuff for any AI or ML loving .NET dev. Over on Dev.2, my friend Paul DiCarlo has an amazing blog post about how you can use the new preview version of WSL2 and VS Code to build Jetson containers for NVIDIA devices on Windows 10. And so the TLDR is that Jetson Containers uh, is a project that allows you to build uh, CUDA compatible images for running GPU accelerated um, applications as containers, and it's very cool. And so you can check out Paul's post uh, for all the details, and it's linked in the description below. On Channel 9 this week, we've got lots of great content. First up on the IoT show, Olivier talks about solving business problems at scale with IoT and context data. Over on On.net, the team goes through a full rundown of how the Visual Studio test platform works. And finally, on the Xamarin show, James and John talk about Android X for Xamarin. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So if you were a frequent viewer of this show, and if you are, first of all, thank you very much, or if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I'm sort of obsessed with the whole vaporwave aesthetic and retro computing in general, especially stuff that has an 80s or early 90s feel. Well, an amazing website relaunched last week called poolside.fm. And not only is it sort of the perfect mashup between DOS and System 6 or System 7 for Macintosh, it's a really great way to enjoy some very chill tunes and some very chill video clips. Also, I'm completely obsessed with the coloring of the desktop and am in the process of creating a VS Code theme which is inspired by this design. Um, go ahead and let me know any of your favorite cool new websites or Instagram accounts, especially for retro stuff, in the comments down below. And I'd also love your, uh, your thoughts on any of the topics we discussed on today's show. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button because it really does help other people find out about the show and learn more stuff. And also go ahead and subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all your dev nerd needs. See you next time.